Hey, and welcome back. Uh, Brad Tragic. Uh, not a lot of videos. Um, and the reason is because I'm actually home this week. I'm off all in the week. I'm going to be uh, packing and uh, getting ready um, to move uh, this coming Friday. Um, so, uh, big, big plans. Um, website was updated last night. Um, please check out that if you're interested in purchasing anything, Bonanza.com, Listy.com, links are there. There you go. Let's get straight to Crazy Wrestling Review. Enough with me. Um, let's talk about, first of all, the major story. I'll get that out of the way. Uh, Jerry the King of Waller, uh, and now it's official. I checked the website, uh, which is good that I do this, you know, like a day late um, because I get to get, you know, basically if anything happened on Raw, um, I get to get the full news and then report to you on Tuesday. And you know, everybody watch wrestling on Monday, so you know most people watch it. And then I like to watch a few reviews online, which is like that's me. You know, I watch off the rip show and I watch Trio Woe show normally. Uh, don't happen to don't know what happened to Trio Woe show last night. I didn't uh, really go hunt it down, um, but I did get on later and I kind of forgot, so I went and checked out uh, off the rip show, which is a great show uh, this Monday. Uh, very respectful. Um, but Jerry the King of Lawler. Uh, suffered a heart attack, which is the official uh, news. Um, so sad to hear that. And I didn't really, this is the honest truth of what happened last night when I was watching wrestling. I laid down on the couch. I was really exhausted from everything going on in my personal life. And um, I fell asleep during the, actually like before the tag match. And I woke up during the tag match. And I didn't really, I was really caught the end of Kane, Choke Slam, and Daniel Bryan and getting the win. So I totally missed all of this, and I didn't know really much that that had happened, so I deleted the program. So I wish I would have kept it just so I would have seen the reaction and how it all went down. But it was just kind of weird how the ending Raw was really kind of like, it was, you know, as they say, Bizarro World. Um, and it was definitely Bizarro World. Um, things happen in that, I don't know, but something happens when they go to Montreal, Canada, every single time. There's something that happens. So, uh... Without a doubt, something happened when they went to Montreal last night. Jerry King suffered a heart attack, and that basically caused Michael Cole to go speechless. Um, from a business standpoint, I, I think that WWE should have stepped in, and you know, uh, and if, it, if Cole was shaken up that bad, then they should have took him off, and they should have got different announcers out there. From a business standpoint, it's kind of stupid that they wouldn't, you know, put you know two other guys out there. Um, because, I mean, Michael Cole saw it happen right in front of him, and I don't think that anybody else would have been as shaken up as he would uh, been, you know, since he was right beside him when it happened, you know. Um, they could have had Booker T go out there and, you know, I don't know, anybody. You could have had anybody go out there, to be quite honest, you know. I mean, just somebody to sit in those chairs and talk about the matches, you know. I mean, that's all they needed. Um, be quite honest, it should have been Bret Hart um, go out there, and maybe they should have said, hey, will you go out and, you know, do some commentary, you know, since, you know, Lawler something happened to Lawler, you know, um, and I hope maybe Brett will be the guy that steps in and uh, maybe they'll have him step in. And I mean, I don't, I, I definitely know this ain't a work because the way, just the way it a happened last night, you know, it wasn't part of the storyline. Uh, it, it was real. It was real. And I mean, kind of sad to, uh, that that happened. But let's get right down to the story of everything. Um, the whole entire show it started off with, uh, Brett, uh, CM Punk, uh, talking um, to each other. Bret Hart came out, you know, adoration. I mean, it was really crazy because the fans would not shut up. They just kept on cheering and cheering and cheering. Uh, and then he started to say something about Montreal, screw job, and then <laughs> they were scanning, they screwed Bret. It was great. The ambience of everything uh, in, in that building that night. Um, and CM Punk came down, you know, to tell us crap about, you know, respect, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to beat your title reign, or I've already beat your title reign, and soon I'm going to beat some of the best uh, people in the world. And they were mentioning, you know, like superstar Billy Graham. I think that he's on the verge of beating him, or he already has beaten him, something like that. Um, uh, but interesting article. If no one did check that article out about CM Punk, I don't know if you can find it. I'm not sure what the article was called. They were talking about the uh, the reigns that he could beat if he continues to be champion. Pretty interesting, which he's actually really, really close to beating, I think, one of Hulk Hogan's reigns. Um, which, you know, I mean, if that happens, you know, but the way that Cena talked about him on in a Raw, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know. It's like they almost set up for this. Like, I wonder if they almost set up, like, for this, like, this whole entire time, just not putting him in an event and doing all this other crap just on purpose. Um, you know, I, I don't know. 
Uh, but basically, there wasn't... Okay, I want to be straight up honest with you about this this week. Raw was horrible. I don't even think it was half good. You know, there was some good stuff thrown in there. Sheamus, the little thing. It started off okay, and then it just went to shit. So, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what to think about Sheamus. I think it's time for him to take a break. I think he, he'll be better as a heel champion than he is a face champion because I, I just... I don't know. Like, I think he's like... He needs to be a heel champion and learn from somebody. He needs to get in a program that's with somebody that's really, really good at being a babyface. Um, somebody that's, you know, on the mid card or something. You know, put him in a feud with somebody on the mid card that's a really good babyface. Uh, I can't think of anything that comes to mind. You know, maybe a Santino or something like that. You know, put him in a, uh, a program with somebody like that. You know, or, or you know, I, I don't even know. I can't even really think of anybody that's, like, super good that is a babyface, you know. I mean, there's really nobody who puts Sim Cara, but he couldn't really teach anything for him because he can't talk on the microphone. Uh, Ray's not that great on the mic either. Um, so, you know, I, I can't really think of anyone that is, like, super good on the mic, you know, except maybe, like, a Wade Barrett if he comes back and put him in a few with Wade Barrett. You know, that's the only thing I can think of. But, I mean, Seamus is horrible, and they need to get the belt off of him. Hopefully they drop it, you know, soon. Hope Ziggler gets the belt, and, you know, there we go. I mean, who knows, he may, you know, maybe we'll have a switch of the guard right there, and Ziggler will be on pace, and Sheamus will be turned heel. That would be kind of interesting uh, if they would do that. Um, yeah, we had a Divas tag team. I don't even remember what the matches happened last night. We had Kobe Kingston, and uh, that was the first match. Kobe Kingston and R-Truth to call on uh, Miz and Antonio Cesaro. Uh, wow. Um, first thing that came to my mind is, are these two facing each other at Night of Champions? <laughs> It was like there was no interference from anybody like after the match or anything. It's like what was the point of this match? And you know, a lot of people were like struck odd last night after the the reviews and everything. I know off the rip show was kind of awkward, which they wouldn't really go into detail. They wouldn't rip matches apart last night because they were, you know, I think too bent up on the whole Jerry Lawler thing, which is sad. It's sad to hear, but you know, I want to tell my opinion about what I think. And you know, this tag match was it shouldn't have been there. It should have been like. Maybe the last week or the week before that should have happened, not this week. Um, it was good they get, they're getting Antonio on the show, and they had to make the announcement about the Battle Royal, and the winner of that would face Antonio Cesaro at, you know, Night of Champions. Uh, Miz, I don't think he even has a match. I haven't checked. I was just on WWE.com to see about Jerry Lawler, uh, but I didn't really check to see if they announced any match for him. I'm assuming they'll announce it on SmackDown, probably. Uh, maybe a triple threat with uh, Ray and Cody. That'd be kind of interesting. I know Paul Thorpe Show mentioned that. Uh, that could be possible, so who knows. Uh, I think it'd be interesting how the four-way has Sin Cara thrown in there. Uh, you know, I don't think Antonio will be a, uh, what do they call it, transitional champion. I don't think he'll be a transitional champion. Uh, he could be, though. Who knows? You know, maybe Cody Rhodes will get the belt back. Or get the, uh, no, never mind. Yeah, yeah, he might be able to get the belt back. Uh, but I doubt it. I think it's Cody Rhodes' time. But if they were going to, like, really, like, if they were just there to punish Rhodes, you know, then he might get the belt back and not the champions. Um yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much it. You know, we had a Divas match, which is always stupid because all these matches and all these people that were going to be at Night of Champions, um, they didn't really have any, like, beatdowns or, you know, any, like, cheating or anything like that. So a lot of things, like, we're going into Night of Champions thinking every match is straightforward, very basic, and there's probably going to be a lot of, like, aftermath, you know, at Night of Champions. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of screw jobs and things like that happen at uh, Night of Champions. Uh uh, Eve and uh, Caitlin, there we go, and Layla, the women's champion, uh, took on uh, Natalia, uh, Beth, Beth Phoenix, and uh, Alyssa Fox, there we go, who I guess is heel. I, 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 I question that too, and I don't even watch much of SmackDown or anything, but all the rip show mentioned it, so uh, I guess I was right. When the hell did she turn heel? Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, what can I say? It's a women's tag match. Uh, it ended with uh, Eve kind of cheating and kind of smacking uh, Layla, getting a tag in and, and doing her finisher and winning the match. And then nothing. Nothing by the end of Raw. Nothing at all. We got Caitlyn versus Layla at Night of Champions. The only thing I can see is that they announce it at the pay-per-view that Eve's going to be in a triple threat match. Or Eve goes to uh, AJ at, you know, not a champion. And uh, gets that title, get, gets entered into the title match. That's all I can think of. 
Uh, we also got uh, CM Punk had a choice in the fans. They chose between Brodus, Waller, or uh, Orton. And this is kind of where it kind of going to play into the Waller thing is because Orton ended up getting picked by the universe. Uh, and then uh, it turned into a tag team match. I, I mean, I thought it was a great match. All three of them didn't like it. I liked it. I think it was. I think it, I thought it was actually a pretty good match. And then you know Ziggler had to come down and ruin it. Um, an awkward time too. It, it like was it, it seemed like it wasn't planned out. Like it, it just came out and attacked team. It was like kind of awkward. Like the way he came out. Like it, usually you, know, you either see the guy running out of the ring or you know they pan to him. And you, you see him running. You, know, you didn't see anything like that at all. He just, you just he just ran in the ring and you just see him go boom and hit the guy. And I'm like, what the world? It's like kind of awkward. Uh, it turns it ends up turning into a tag team match. Ziggler and Punk and take on uh, takes on uh, I can't talk. Uh, to call on uh, Orton and Lawler. Weird combination in a tag team. Uh, I don't think either of these guys have ever tag team before. Um, but you see, uh, you know, it, Orton and Lawler got the win. Um, because Heyman came out and was talking to Punk the whole time. It was really hilarious to Vicky sitting there yelling at him the whole time. Ah, excuse me, excuse me. And Lawler, or Heyman just keeps on turning and going, looking at her, and then turning back to Punk, keep on talking. <laughs> it was hilarious. Uh, and it made him lose the match. Uh, and then Punk just walks out uh, with Heyman talking. Uh, and then you get the awkward... Uh, Thing with I, I I thought it was funny. If, I think if you're like a Heyman guy, or you know if you like ECW, you like kind of like the inside jokes sometimes WWE pulls on internet fans. I think this is a poke at us uh, because uh, all Punk responded to Matt Stryker was, "I'm a Heyman guy." <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Um, yeah, ain't much else to talk about. Daniel Bryan and Kane, new number one contenders for taking belts. They'll face Kofi and our truth. New tag team champions coming soon. That's not really hidden. You know, that's not really going to be a big surprise if they won the tag team belts. Uh, it's time, anyway. Uh, so what better way to give Brian and Kane a belt and, you know, kill the tag team vision even more? Yay! <laughs> um, you know, we also seen... Um, what was it? I think that's basically We saw Alberto de Rio versus Tyson Kidd. I ain't really noticed anything wrong, but, you know, uh, I thought it was an okay match. Um, weird, like, almost in the main event, and Tyson Kidd was, like, there. Um, you know, Rey Mysterio, Cody Rhodes, could have been better. Miz had interference. It, it was the awkward match because there was no announcing in the match. It was kind of weird. Like, in, in a way, I kind of liked it, but in a way, it was just kind of too weird for me. Um and thing is, I don't think they could ever do that because, you know, you might actually catch, like, signs where they're talking to each other and things like that. Might be uh, bad for business um, if there's no talking over them so they can actually hide what they're saying to each other. Uh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, then just ignore me. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, because, I mean, everybody knows they talk to each other during the, during their match. So, there you go. It kind of be awkward because they're, like, trying, they're trying to hide talking to each other. Like, there's not going to be no announcing. You might want to watch what you say. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. But, I mean, all in all, it was, it was a decent role. But it was... It, no. It bore between horrible and decent. That's probably between... It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't decent either. It was, it was actually a pretty bad role. Um, the only segments that saved it was the CM Punk and John Cena segments and the CM Punk and Bret Hart segment. Yeah, that's about it. That's about it. Uh, the anger management thing was kind of funny. Uh, team friendship. Ugh, all the way. Uh, so that's basically about it. Uh, Sheamus, the big thing about that, bro kicks banned. Stupid. Oh, that didn't explain why he has a new finisher now. <laughs> why? <laughs> you know, it's like, they were going to do that. Why wouldn't they save that? For not a champions and like everybody's saying, well, how's he going to be ADR? Um, you know, how's he going to beat him? And then don't show that until not a champions. They're like, oh, he's got a new finisher. Oh my god! No, they wasted it on Raw. So and then the following week on SmackDown, 
they have you know, them ban the bro kick. So very weird, very weird. Um, yeah, don't know about that. Um, predictions for Night of Champions. Um, well, I'm gonna go in depth. I'm gonna make a new video here in a second, and I'm gonna do the predictions for Night of Champions. If you like this, like this review. Uh, go ahead, subscribe up above. If you have never seen me before, comment down below. Like me if you like it. If you don't like it, sorry, I did what I could. <laughs> uh, hope you like me. Moving to Tennessee soon, so you might. I don't know when you're gonna see the next crazy wrestling review, but when I do and get enabled to get online and upload a video. You will be the first to hear all my thoughts on what happened. Uh, the Night of Champions review probably will be old. Uh, but I'll probably just throw it in with a crazy wrestling review uh, down the road. But I will be keeping tabs. Hopefully get to see Raw next week. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, this has been Brad Tragic. Hope you enjoyed the show. Hope you continue watching. If you like the show, tell your buddies. And rock on. <laughs>